This is the Bentley Continental GT. This has been with us for a few years and they've now decided to make a four-door version of it. Now obviously I had to go somewhere appropriate to test it, so of course I went to Dubai. This is it. It's called the Flying Spur, and there's a good reason why I've brought it to the Arab Emirates. It just sort of feels right. These days, everything about Bentley is new. It's got a new owner, VW, and you can forget all that scruffy toffs in their tweed jackets nonsense, because today, Bentleys are bought with new money. And that's why it seemed right to bring it here. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that this was a desert wilderness, but now look at it. I've got shirts older than this city. But there's another good reason for coming here. Which is that when you get bored of these urban roads and you really want to stretch your Bentley's legs... All you have to do is slip out of the back door. So, the flying spur then. It costs £115,000 and, as I said earlier, it's basically a four-door version of the Continental GT. So that's not a very good start, really, because when we tested that car a while back, we weren't exactly bowled over by it. It didn't feel as exciting or as special as a Bentley should, and that's probably because underneath, the GT was actually just a big German saloon, the Volkswagen Phaeton. And at first, sitting in the Flying Spur, you think, oh no, here we go again. For example, you still get, here on the console, the Phaeton computer, which has rather too many buttons for my liking. It makes it seem a bit nerdy. And as with the GT, you can press a button and fiddle about with the suspension settings which is just not British. And, like the Continental, the Spur isn't exactly pretty. The back looks like it's come from a Toyota Avensis. Inside, you're swamped in switches, and the headlamps appear to have had their eyebrows singed off. But when you've spent some time with it out here, on the Sun's Anvil, things start to look up. For one thing, the Flying Spur is a lot more pleasant to drive. Bentley have fiddled around with the basic suspension settings a bit, and as a result of this, while the GT ride just got on your nerves after a while, the Spur is cosseting, relaxing. It soothes your brow. But then again, you get it on a road like this, with bends and what have you, and it really is rather nice. It's not like a Rolls-Royce, it doesn't float from crest to crest. What it is is taut, yet supple. It's like the belly of the dancer. But the handling is not the really impressive thing. No, the really impressive thing is the power. Under the bonnet is a 6-litre W12 engine. Two V6s bolted together to give 553 brake horsepower. Which means this two and a half ton car will go from naught to 60 miles per hour in under five seconds, and that's Ferrari territory. Meanwhile, here at the back of your luxury four-door saloon, just behind this little grill, is something called a diffuser. Now, normally these are found on racing cars, and they're there to stop them taking off at really high speed. And there's a good reason for this. It's the Flying Spurs party piece, a top speed of 195 miles an hour. And that makes it the fastest four-door saloon in the world. So there's another good reason for coming out here. You see, the locals love speed. And Mohammed Al Brunstrom didn't mind closing off a stretch of road so that we could give the old girl a bit of welly. That's just a nice Bentley surge. A big, heavy car, four-wheel drive as well, of course. Stable, no drama. That's 100 miles an hour already. Going. 
140. 150. <laughs> That's 160 miles an hour. This really is hell for leather. And there is 180. I can't believe that. Now, the Continental GT can reach that sort of speed, but in that car, it's sort of no big deal. Yet somehow, when you do it in this stately, grown-up four-door saloon, it feels more thrilling and outrageous. And that's how it should be in a Bentley. It's funny what a difference a few changes can make. With two doors and a GT badge, this car just doesn't quite stack up, but double the number of doors, sort the ride out, then you're there. That awesome straight line speed suddenly makes sense. What you're left with is an exquisitely made luxury saloon that in the blink of an eye can turn into a monster. And that makes the flying spur feel like a proper Bentley. I think this is the most dreary piece of styling I've ever seen. It has no presence. No, I have to say, you're right, the thing is they've made it feel like a Bentley, but it looks as though it was designed by a Belgian. Well, it was designed by a Belgian. Oh, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that for £45,000 less, you can have a VW Phaeton, which has got the same basic engine, same four-wheel drive system. That is a really cool car. 